afternoon. I was invited here to give an introduction to fetal cell therapy as it's been practiced in Germany, Switzerland, and Eastern Europe for the past eight decades. I'll first go into the history of how cell therapy products evolved, show a couple of slides with some clinical studies done, mostly in rats, and in the main part, I'll go through some treatment protocols. This is what really interests doctors in private practice. They need the protocols. I'll try to. Here we go. The concept of cell therapy goes back about 3,500 years to ancient Egypt. Evidence of this was found in the so-called Ebra Papyrus. It's the oldest okay. medical textbook on paper scrolls found in Egypt and kept in a museum in Germany. It describes the injection of animal products to improve vitality. It was Professor Paul Niehans, though, that made it famous in 1930 Switzerland. On a Friday night in 1931, he was called by a colleague and surgeon to see a young female patient whose thyroid was removed surgically due to a tumor growth. By mistake, the surgeon also removed her parathyroid glands. The patient was convulsing in a titanic state and close to death. Nihans didn't have the time to implant animal parathyroid gland surgically, so instead he took the fetal calf glands, ground them up, put them in a physiologic solution, and injected them, with, and within a short period of time, the tetanus stopped. Success of the therapy led Nihans to abandon the surgical transplantation of the entire gland, and then treat patients with cell implants through injection instead. During his lifetime, he applied cell therapy to more than 50,000 patients. One of the more famous ones we see here, Pope Pius XII. Over the years, the cell therapy products evolved. At first, the cells were taken from freshly slaughtered lamb fetuses. This method of harvesting was rather primitive, and in the time it took to prepare the injectable cells, toxins formed, and sterile conditions, of course, could not be guaranteed. The materials became infected, and this led to frequent reactions with high fever and inflammation. It required the hospitalization of these patients. The German company Sibylla worked with Professor Neons to develop freeze-dried cells to eliminate toxin and infection reactions. He got the idea from Nestle's freeze-dried coffee. This process also significantly extended the shelf life from a few minutes to several years. These products were mainly used in 1950 to 1970 Germany and Switzerland. Most studies done with fetal cell therapy were done using these lyophilized products. The man who did these studies and really helped to promote this treatment was Professor Franz Schmid in Germany. Professor Schmid was born in 1920, passed away at the age of 80. He was Professor Extraordinary at the University of Heidelberg in Germany. After 21 years' work, he switched to the Children's Hospital at Aschaffenburg, where he remained for 16 years as Chief of Pediatrics. In his lifetime, he published 500 publications in basic sciences and 46 books in the field of medicine. Between 61 and 71, he became world famous for his work on the Encyclopedia of Pediatrics. Other books were Pediatric Radiology and Mongolism Syndrome. His most famous book, though, was Cell Therapy, A New Dimension of Medicine. It was published in 1983, and today is still the most comprehensive book on cell therapy. It's part of the library of most cell therapists around the world. He treated thousands of children born with birth defects with cell therapy very successfully. He was also a great teacher to many cell therapists practicing today. Other ways of preparing the cells came about in the 1980s. The company Milcell in Hamburg, Germany, prepared deep frozen cells. Immediately after harvesting, the cells were frozen with liquid nitrogen. 
and it was shipped to doctors in special containers. The vials were warmed to room temperature immediately before injecting. I still remember sitting in the lab of our office defrosting them with hair dryers while the patients were waiting to be injected. Problems with shipping and storage soon left the field to products that were easier to handle and to maintain. Professor Theurer invented the acid vapor hydrolysis under vacuum to remove the cell membranes from the cells. The idea was to reduce the potential of allergic reactions to the frozen cells. The cells became the product line of the company Vitorgan in Germany, and some are still available today. They come in homeopathic dilutions and used to come in full strength vials. However, the German regulatory authorities continuously changed their mandates, forcing those effective full strength products off the market. Unfortunately, these and other mandates by Germany's FDA regulated many products out of effectiveness. It is difficult to obtain effective products in Germany or elsewhere for that matter. For example, there are no full-strength injectable finest products on the market anymore.